there everybody, what is happening? I think it is Thursday, therefore I am. Which means we got two more days of running this deck. I think we were handed one loss so far. Which is kind of surprising considering who we fought so far, but uh, I like this. I like this one quite a bit. I know it's a little, a little hinky here as far as my turn one went, but uh, that that's okay, we'll be all right. Goblin Arsonist will come down eventually. I'm gonna go ahead and play this Bloodgast early on so I can get to Bashin uh, and use that, you know, reconstitution, have him come back to life. Does not have haste because our opponent's at 20, but we will play that first and say go. Can't block, but we have a blocker next turn with the Goblin Arsonist coming out. We could also just play the Bloodflow Connoisseur, which can sack this thing out, get plus one, plus one, and then if we have a land, we can we can do a lot of uh, really silly, crazy stuff with that. This kind of sucks because this guy's able to gain back the two life that he's going to lose from the Bloodgast going across, but we'll see what happens here when we attack. I think I'm going to play Bloodflow Connoisseur. I think that's pretty much what we do. Got an interesting hand, Act of Treason. I mean, sack stuff out. You know, I could grab this guy and gain two life myself, and then sack it out to my Blood Flow Connoisseur, and have a good time that way. This guy's back at 20. I can't imagine he doesn't want to attack in with the 2 1. It's possible that he could fur the bit in this thing, though, and make it bigger. Oh, that's even worse. That's even worse. Well, we gotta grab that now. So we'll gain our 5 life back, which will be great. We'll also do 5 damage to him, which will just bring him back to this 18, but... Hopefully I could draw a mana, which would allow me to play Goblin Arsonist as well. That'd make me feel a lot more snuggly. But it would have to be a mountain. Um... I mean, I still feel okay about this. We're gonna do quite a bit of damage. We're gonna go back to 20. Our opponent already knows what we're doing. This deck is living up to its namesake already. Because we are going to just be sacking this guy out. We gain that life. I could have sacked it out right there and done one extra damage because it had first strike, but I didn't realize it until after it had already been done. Because it does its damage, I sack it out, do an extra one, he's at 14. Fuck. Damn it! That would have been so slick, but I just... I didn't realize it in time. And now I look like a friggin' asshole. Just enchantments in the hand, or what? Interesting. He's got something for us, some kind of trick. Which almost makes me want to throw down this Goblin Arsonist early. Just to try and see what we can do. I'll put that guy down right now. Attack for four. Because this guy could have a couple of tricks for us. Sacking out the Goblin Arsonist doesn't seem like the worst idea in the world. But now we'll just say go. Now that he's at 11, we can also do some... God, that would have been such a sick trick. He should be at 10 right now, which would allow this to have haste. Sanguine Bond's not going to quite do it for you. Uh, Trumpet Blast kills him? 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. Trumpet Blast kills him, so we just won. We go ahead and attack. I believe 3... Yeah, whatever. Fuck it. I, I think so. It's fine. 2, 4, 6. Eight, eight. Yeah by a landslide oh wait no even 9 10 11 that's fine it's fun math you guys fuck it fuck the whole thing <laughs> whatever we did okay we did okay uh, i like this deck like i said i mean in matchups like that it's gonna run all day stealing their little dudes and sacking them out especially when we have all our pieces on the field now if we hadn't had the sack out effect we don't really have removal unless we have a sack out effect and at three mana we're in a lot of trouble because we need at least five mana to do a grab and sack from the fling. So that's kind of questionable. Just to reiterate the point that I was making before, when I attacked in, I forgot Lightning Talons granted first strike. So what I could have done is I could have had the 5-1, but then I wouldn't have evened him. So I'm just going to retcon this whole episode and say that I did that entirely on purpose so that I could get him even 11 damage and take him to zero. Uh, that's the new, that's the lore now. So there you go. That's what happened. But for serious players, <laughs> for people who actually want to learn from this channel, what I should have said was nothing. What I did say was you'd be surprised. I'll keep this. 
I should have uh, done the five damage, sacked it out to the Bloodflow Connoisseur, because then Bloodflow Connoisseur would have done his damage or her damage uh, and done the additional one damage to my opponent. I just want to make sure I'm clear on that so that everybody's on the same page and people know how to be better at Magic the Gathering than me, because I'm a little slow on the uptake, apparently. Fling's interesting. Um, two flings is not the best, because I can't really make my blood flow kind of sore huge. Um, let's tie for one. Pop in my... Ever since I can remember, I've been popping my knuckles. Okay, we'll put that down. We've got a shock, though, which is nice. Like I said, that can be removal if we need it to be. This guy's got two mana, probably the 1-1 one, one draw card. Elf on the shelf. There's nothing new under the sun, my friends. I mean, Bash do one, I mean, Bash do one damage to him anyway, because there's a chance that he doesn't block it because he loses the creature and takes one. There's also a chance that he blocks it so that he stems the blood flow from just this one one hitting him repeatedly. And now this is a point where you could definitely look at this and be like, what if this is fur or the bitten? Because my tempo is completely different if that's fur or the bitten right now. So. I don't know, maybe tomorrow, maybe for tomorrow we'll take all the shocks out, put fur or the bitten, and you guys can just see how it runs in that instance. I do like taking the two damage directly to the face on these guys. I like the fact that he didn't block that. He would have blocked it probably if we furred or the bitten, just to be, could have been freaked out. Um, some early, newer players might do something like that, but if this guy's a pro, then he wouldn't really worry about his life till he's at around 14, which is perfect for us because that's when we get to surprise him with stuff like fling. And hopefully maybe a shock to the face, you never know. I hate life gain. That's a bit of a problem. I don't really know what deck I'm facing then because I don't know a red green that really needs to run that guy. That's a little weird. Attack for one. Goblin arsonist of your own in your hand still? So you could block and double kill or what? Hmm. No land drop either, which is interesting. I'm gonna attack for two and see what happens here. Uh, the only thing that my opponent really could have is a a fireball, a shock. Um, put that down so I can leave the shock open. Show him the shock is still open. Now he could lay a land and kill all my guys, which would really suck. I don't have the fling open, so I can't really do anything there. I could sack out uh, the other two guys to buff the this to a 3-3 and fling it to do three damage, but no, we're just seeing a cultivate out of him, which is kind of nice. It's not terrible to see. Got some land. He gets to lay that one, doesn't he? Or did he already? No, because he was at two. So he laid both lands for turn. So one of the hand, uh, one of the cards in his hand is a land. We should have caught a better look at what it was to better understand what we have going on here. Now this we can be a little foolhardy with. I'm going to attack with everybody. And we'll see what my opponent does. We could do a couple of different things here. I don't really like where I'm at. But once I, I have five mana, so I mean, I could start feeling really good if I see like my act of treason come up because then I could grab his stuff and fling it at his face after hitting him with it, which we have yet to be able to do. So yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to grab that guy and hit him with it and fling it. So hopefully I draw one of those off the top. I'm taking five here, going to 14. That'd be a big difference maker. But we need to see that off the top, otherwise I don't really have anything to do. Please, 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 please. Oh. So this kind of sucks because all I get to do is sack it to my dude. But what can you do? I mean, you play the cards you're dealt very literally in Magic the Gathering. Um, This guy's going to be below, so I'll keep that on top. That seems fine. A few extra damage isn't going to hurt anybody. We moved my combat step. This guy just has haste, so we'll attack. Four, five, six, seven. That's seven. I'll take him to six. And I can't forget to trigger this so that we can kill this guy. He's going to watch the damage effects there. Sacrifice a creature. Okay. Yes, please. That's going to sack out. That'll become a 2-2. Two -two. I still have the shock in hand. I have a haster that's going to be off the top of my pile, which will actually be pretty nice. And I also have the fling, so I think I can probably win this. Kind of depends on what he plays here, but he can also gain the life. It depends on how cautious he is. 
Gain in life takes him to 11. That's kind of a problem. I've got six damage looking at him. Take him to five. I could sack out, sack out, sack out, fling, though. And that would kill him, I believe. So we have two, four, five, six. Yeah, six and five is 11. I think that's even damage, but he would have to not block any of it. So that's part of the problem as well. Uh, would be he would have had to not block anything. I still have the shock that I can take to the face, though, so we might be able to do this anyway. Uh, let's do some quick math. I don't like to do this on the channel because I feel like it's boring for you guys, but we've got two. Oh, he's back to 11, so that doesn't even have. Yeah, and then I'll just do this then. I don't like that, but we all do what we have to do in life. I can do one, two, and make that a three, three. Can't kill him this turn, but I can get close, and I have a second fling, so. Okay. I sack out the one, one. Okay. sucks three I could make it a five five but I lose everybody else and then he could have ground assault which would kill him Takes him to eight. I could sack out my four, 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 five, six. That takes him to two, though. And then I can fling my two, one. He has to gain no life here, though, is the problem. But once I get to untap. I can kill him. So he has to do 14 to me right here. Because once I untap, I can sack out the blood ghast and kill him with the other fling. But also, if he gains life, I'm fucked. So that's the other side of this, is that he should... But I, I figure he probably only has the... I'm really nervous right here, because we could totally just get boned. Okay, he could still lay it, theoretically. Because he's got three mana. Okay, that's it. We won. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, crap. That was sketchy. That was fucking sketchy. I don't know that I enjoyed that. And then you had a shock there that worked out okay, but, you know, also, I'm going to go ahead and tomorrow I'm going to take the shocks out and just put it in just to see how it runs. Um, I untap and I win here. So this will work out. Fling, players, that guy. He doesn't have time to react because it's as... See, the cool thing about Fling, and we're going to jump in and make that change, so if you guys want to stick around, I'll tell you a little bit. Uh, a red-green can't counter Fling. And what I mean by that is that if um, if the card red... Let's go in here, and it's index. I'm terrible. I also could have just shortcutted and done it that way because where is this thing? Okay, it's right here. Let's edit the deck, let's take a look at Fling and just read through it, and this is just kind of a little rules thing. So if you know all the rules, feel free to stick around, because this is going to be fucking hype. As an additional cost to cast Fling, sacrifice a creature. So this is a much different thing than if it said, sacrifice a creature, Fling deals damage equal to sacrifice creature's power, okay? Because if I cast Fling, in response to me casting Fling, my opponent could use a shock to have killed my Bloodgast. If fling red, sacrifice a creature. So if you take that out as an additional cost, if you take that out and just say, sacrifice a creature, fling deals damage, then my opponent could have 
reacted to that by sacking out the blood glass, gassed, I have nothing to sack, fling fizzles. But as an additional cost to cast fling means that the sacking, the act of sacking the creature happens at the exact same time as the tap down of one, two mana, um, one in a red. It's a little hard to see in this particular game. It looks a little weird in this game, but that is what happens. It looks like it happens at a, at a different moment uh, because the, I think the mana taps down first and then it asks you to select a creature. It might not though. Maybe you select the creature and then the mana taps down. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not sure what it looks like, but just so that you guys know, that's what's taking place as an additional cost to cast fling. So it's awesome because they can't counter it. Now, the, the inverse of that is if you are facing somebody who's in blue, if they counter, you know, with anything, if they use any kind of counter, you know, they can't do stuff like Voyage's End to stop this. But if they do something like Negate, then sadly, your creature's still going to die because you did it as a cost of fling. So you, it's, it's just like you pay two mana, you know, it's not like you get the two mana back if the creature or if the spell is canceled. So you are down two mana and a creature if, if you're actually facing blue. But when you're facing a green red deck like that, there's really no counters in the green red uh, to stop to stop that other than actually no fog is just combat damage. So once again, that's not going to matter. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Like I said, tomorrow, and I did not take those shocks out because I'm a dingleberry. Tomorrow, we're going to try this deck with the uh, Fervor of the Bittens just to show you guys what that looks like. Now, I did play it. I made the choice to put the shocks in instead of the fur or the bit, and I did play it with that in playtesting. I'm just going to show you guys what it looks like, because I feel like, you know, you've seen pretty much what this deck does. We would probably get one more, one more win at the very least tomorrow, maybe two more wins. So I think you can kind of get a good idea of the win percentage of this deck. Quite often, this thing's going to win. You'll lose like two every, what, eight or something like that. So it'd be cooler if I did two on the days and the deck building days are shorter now so it'd be kind of cool if we had a full 10 matches so you could get kind of a scope of it um huh maybe we'll do something like that at some point but uh you can get a pretty clear idea of how this deck runs so tomorrow we'll just show you how it runs with the fur of the bittens in there and just see if you like that better and you can make that change yourself if you want to check out my other channel technovolver it is a completely separate channel from this one there's lots of cool stuff about fighting games there's mobile gaming and reviews that go up and uh, there's a bunch of really fun things going on over there so be sure to check out that channel 1001 spikes review going on as well stay tuned to this channel because there's going to be more decks to build and all sorts of crazy stuff going on coming up and of course we are going to be doing the the single player campaign i'm still working on getting those up but a lot of them have already been shot so stay tuned for that as well if you just want to check those out thanks again for watching i'll see you all next time